but you find some stuff like this. You know, just get a piece of wood you can use to bash it with a club. Right? Making a little nest. I mean, the animals do it. They're, they're right to do it. It makes life a lot nicer now. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I thought I'd show you how to make a chair in the woods very quickly. Um, if you're spending a long day on the trail and you're making camp for the night, or even if you're just going to stop and uh, sit a while, catch your breath or enjoy the scenery, or maybe you're building a deer blind or something like that, want to sit comfortably for a few hours. Um, sure, you can carry a chair in with you, uh, but uh, you know, the, the heavier, the more comfortable the chair is, the heavier it's going to be. <laughs> so it's handy to know how to build a chair very quickly, just using natural materials that are kicking around the woods. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Now bring the camera in and show you the general idea here. I thought I'd build it against this tree here because that's just like a natural back of a chair. Let's bring the camera over a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so the first step in this process is to find a dead tree. I mean, I, this was just literally laying on the ground, okay? A dead tree, reasonably sound, you know, not, not super rotten. And uh, you're going to want to cut that into about, you know, Think about your armpit to your chest, I guess. Or uh, This all depends on how tall you are, I guess. So let me say four feet, right? About four feet lengths, two four feet lengths. It's probably longer than you need it to be, but um, you know, you can't make it. Uh... Once you cut it too short, you can't make it longer, right? All right, so we got those. What you need, what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to have three fixed points, okay? So here's one. We've got a, a tree here, and out from the tree, about the length you'd want a seat to be, I'm going to drive this post in the ground here. You know, if the ground won't accept the post, you have to sharpen a point on it with your knife or axe, whatever you've got. This seems to be. Not accepting this. Could be a rock down there, possibly. That seems to be a good spot there. Let's just use this rotten log here. That's not bad. You can cut the top off, but the, the more you can drive that into the ground, the better. That's good enough. Okay, now, all you got to do is start throwing stuff between the tree and your two posts. Just find whatever rotten stuff you can find. Anything. Rotten wood's better because, you know, it's laying on the ground. You can, you can break it pretty easily. You know, you just throw it in there. You keep finding stuff like that. You can just throw on. All right, this is not luxury accommodations. Every once in a while, you give it a kick. Settle it in. making little adjustments as you go along to try to get it as level as you can. Try not to have anything sticking up as you know, <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> Let's try that out. That's not bad. I think it needs to come up a little bit more for my height.
All right, so now we're at the point where we do some fine tuning. This is about the right height for me. Um, do some fine tuning here. Now, if you were going to be at a spot for multiple days, multiple times, you'd want to take some twine, some string, cordage, and tie it to this tree, to this stick, around the back of the tree and to this one to keep them from tipping down. But if it's just for one evening or for an afternoon or you know, relatively temporary, doesn't matter so much. We want to get nice and comfortable. Find some rotten wood like this stuff, right? It's as good as a sponge, right? I mean, you don't want it soaking, wringing wet, but you find some stuff like this, you know, just get a piece of wood you can use to bash it like a club, right? Making a little nest. I mean, the animals do it. They're, they're right to do it. It makes life a lot nicer to have a soft, cushiony seat. Maybe if you're young, you don't care about that sort of thing so much, but I'm gonna tell you as the years pile on, these things matter. All right, now, now that's soft. Now that might be a little bit wet, so if you want to be in the absolute lap of luxury, put some uh, spruce boughs on there. All right, just a couple branches off a tree. Won't hurt the tree none. A little insulation, right? Dry. There you go, you even got a little uh, sort of thing to get up and down with. You can cut those off if you want it flush. They're kind of handy just to leave there. All right, I can lean against this tree. All right, I got just the right height for my legs. It's custom fit. I find most chairs you buy, they're, they're too damn low anyway. I'm six foot four. So that did not take long, you know, five, 10 minutes, especially if the materials are handy. So there's a lot of dead trees here, a lot of stuff lying around, but it was relatively narrow in diameter, so I needed a lot of it. Um, but, you know, at least where I live, finding felled trees that are so rotten you can kick them in half with your feet. I didn't have to use a saw to cut any of this stuff. It's all different lengths. You know, I just walked around in the woods. If I saw a fallen tree that looked a little bit rotten, I'd give it a kick. If I heard a crack or it broke, I knew it was the right one. So all this wood was gathered, you know, pretty... I mean, I cut it a little bit because there'd be five-second intervals where I was away from the camera. But really, you know, I put this together effectively in real time. It doesn't take any time to do. Uh, you can adjust things, you know, as you're sitting there, you might notice it needs to be come up a little bit this way or move down, that's easy to adjust, right? right? And as I said, if you're gonna be at one spot for a long amount of time, you might wanna use some, some cordage to tie these two sticks around the back of the tree uh, nice and tight so that um, they don't, you know, the, the pressure you're putting on this doesn't continually push them forward to knock them down. But if it's just temporary, you know, for, uh, you know, a shore lunch or a trail lunch or a deer blind or whatever, right? <laughs> Maybe you're just, you've got a walking trail near where you like, where you live, and, uh, you know, there's a place you like to stop, uh, you know, with a nice view uh, to, to eat lunch. And it would be a little bit nicer to be able to, you know, instead of sitting on the ground, uh, you know, sit up in a chair, right? Anyway. For me, that's a bush chair, <laughs> you know. Uh, this, this saw is uh, handy to have. You can get by without it. I guess if, I, if I'd really had to, I could have just used this, the saw that's on this, this little pocket knife, which I probably would have done, because um, all I needed the saw for was to cut these. And for that matter, if I was dealing with green wood like an alder, I could have used my knife anyway. So hardly any gear needed. You know, as, as long, what you need, the most important thing is that there's a lot of dead trees lying around, which I never seem to have a lack of here. So as long as you've got dead trees lying around, they're not dead trees, they're a chair. <laughs> they're a chair just waiting to be made. A custom chair that's just the right height for you with a nice, comfortable back. You know, you can find a tree that's got a bit of a lean on it, you can get it even better. I, 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 it's useful to get a tree that's leaned back a bit. This one was, it's, it's not perfectly straight, it's back a few degrees. Um, you wouldn't want to lean forward like this. That wouldn't be comfortable. And there's, you could put your backpack behind you. I don't have one with me right here today, but if you had a backpack, you could just put it behind you, between you and the tree. It would sort of fill up that lumbar region. Of course, there's, you could use evergreen boughs to do. There's all kinds of things you can do like that. I remember being on a fishing trip once. I was in the woods for seven days. And about day three or day four, I can't remember, I was just, I was just beat. And we got to this camp that we were going to stay at for two days. 
because uh, we needed to sort of revitalize a little bit. We we're kind of worn down. And I built something like exactly like this. And I remember just sitting by the fire, I had a little glass of whiskey, and I just fell asleep. <laughs> fell right asleep for about an hour until I eventually fell off the tree. Uh, but I fell right asleep, right? Um, you're not going to fall asleep sitting cross-legged on the ground, um, especially in your 40s. <laughs> Probably, well, unless you're doing a lot of yoga and stuff like that. But I remember I just, just conked right out. Um, and the next morning when I had my breakfast, you know, I rigged up a little flat thing. I could set my, my coffee mug on, you know. It was just, it was like living in a lap of luxury. And all it took is about five minutes, you know, just that. Five minutes more of a little bit of, and actually, I think right next to where I built it, there was a, a huge rotten tree that was nothing. Just, just kicked it apart. It, basically, the thing went together in minutes, right? And it was such a comfort to have. It's the small comforts that make uh, being out in the bush uh, that, just that much more enjoyable. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And uh, until next time, get out in the woods and have some fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching.